Now we're going to look at formal charge. Formal charge is very useful for keeping track of electrons when reactions are happening one after the other. It also helps us keep track of whether or not this molecule overall is charged. You'll see that formal charge applies to one atom at a time within a molecule as opposed to the molecule as a whole. So you might be asked something like, what is carbon's formal charge here? Now with carbon it's almost always zero or sometimes plus one in a carbocation. Y'all ready for this? Formal charge is found by taking the number of electrons in the element that you are examining, the element of the atom you're examining, minus the valence count it currently has. Now, what this means is the red number in the periodic table up here minus what I'm about to explain valence count is. We'll learn by doing this example. Let's look at ammonia, NH3. You should know from the Lewis dot structure video that you fill up the outer atoms first. Give hydrogens all two, and we have eight electrons, so there's two left over. Everybody's happy. Now we only look at the formal charge, as I said, of one atom at a time. Right now we're going to examine nitrogen. We start with the number of electrons it has in its elemental form. That's five. Now, as far as valence count, here's how to figure that out. For valence count, you count each electron around the atom as one. For each bond, even though there's two electrons in the bond, each bond counts as one for valence count. So you look at the number of things around it, whether it's a dot or a line, and that's one. For this nitrogen, there's one, two, three bonds, and one, two electrons, that's five. I don't know why I wrote this backwards, but we're subtracting five in the valence count from five on the periodic table, the number of electrons nitrogen wants around it to be happy, and turns out it is happy. Its formal charge is zero in ammonia. Let's look at something else though. When ammonia is in an acidic solution, it forms ammonium, NH4+. Let's look at how the formal charge changes in this reaction. Now we know from the previous example that ammonia's formal charge is zero, five minus five. Here's what happens when it takes that proton from the acidic solution. These two electrons come over and form a new bond. That's where the electrons come from. That creates this, N bonded to four hydrogens. Now, the formal charge of this is still five minus something, because nitrogen is always five, and this time there are only four bonds around it. Although there's the same number of electrons there, there's four bonds instead of three bonds and a lone pair. So it's five minus four. That means nitrogen's formal charge is one. To show this, we write a plus one right next to it. Now once you take the formal charge of every atom in this molecule and add them up, that's the overall charge of this molecule. Now let's look at one of the hydrogens around this. Hydrogen's number from the periodic table, the number of electrons around it that would make it happy, is one. It has one bond around it, so one minus one is zero. This hydrogen's formal charge is zero, and of course, they're all equivalent. This example shows a very important point. Charge is always conserved among reactants and products. Notice with the reactants, there's a neutral molecule and a proton, a plus one charge. The product of these two things forming one is plus one. Now that you know Lewis dot structures and formal charge, the only thing left to do is to combine them to figure out what the best Lewis dot structure is for a given compound. It's going to be so much fun, you won't even know what to do with yourself. You'll be like this guy, yeah!